as you read here from, thank you. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the cause now pending shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tamarki, for coming out today to finish up the second portion of your person most knowledgeable deposition. You understand that you have been designated to testify here today on behalf of the County of Los Angeles, correct? Yes. Okay. What do you call the warrant when you're going to take a child from its parents for the first time? If you're seeking court's permission, yeah, that would be good. And the way we, the term out we use is removal order. Okay, a removal order. So you don't even, even actually call it a warrant. Well, it's a warrant. It's under the warrants and we call it a removal order. Now, let's compare a little bit with what you instructed your social workers in 2009 with what you instructed your social workers in 2008. In terms of which policies? I in terms of the gradation of harm that we're looking at before we seize a child without first obtaining a warrant. Let's start there. I really need to see the policies in front of me. I, I, I'm really not comfortable answering that question unless I have that in front I, of me. I, I understand that you may want to look at the policy, but I'm entitled to your best recollection. You spent some time preparing for your deposition, right? Yes. Did you review documents in preparation for your deposition? I reviewed some of the, pol some of the policies, yes. The policies you thought were relevant to the testimony? Yes. Okay. So you've actually reviewed those relevant policies more than just in relation to this deposition, right? I've reviewed them in the past. Okay. So I think we both have a pretty good understanding of what's in these policies. And what I'm entitled to and what I'm looking for is your best recollection. Okay. But you understand that, uh, at least in California, we're governed by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals published decisions, right? Based on your experience as the policy manager who's writing these policies, you, you understand that, right? I, I do understand that, that it applies, yes. It's important that they be instructed either through the policies or through training about that law, right? It's, it's important that I agree with, the, it's important that I understand that. Okay, and one of the ways that you make sure your social workers understand the law is by doing things like promulgating policies, right? Yes. And did you have an understanding prior to December of 2009 that when we're talking about immediate risk, we're talking about that time component, the time to get a warrant? Did you have that understanding prior to December 2009? Again, my understanding of immediate risk is that, that if we don't re remove this child, this child will get harmed. I don't recall, in, at least in my mind, there was a specific, with an X amount of time, prior to 09, 1209. Okay. It was a judgment call that this kid's going to be hurt if, or if we don't remove this kid right now. Okay. But now you do understand that you can't remove the child without a warrant unless the child is going to suffer, likely to suffer, severe bodily injury or death in the time that would be required to obtain a warrant, correct? That's your understanding now. Go ahead. I, I think that, that that decision clarified and gave us more detail as to what that meant, yeah. So the answer is yes? It, it clarifies, it gives us more of a guy, more guy time What's the word I'm trying to think? Parameters, guidelines, okay. as to that. Can I have my question reread, please? I'm not sure I actually got an answer. Question, but now you do understand that you can't remove the child without a warrant unless the child is going to suffer, likely to suffer, severe bodily injury or death in the time it would be required to obtain a warrant, correct? That's your understanding now? Our policy has always referenced that if, if you don't have immediate, you know, harm of this kid, you need a warrant. And the reason that you updated 
the policy, what you actually said in the update was, what you're telling your social workers is, the seriousness of the potential harm to the child does not create exigent circumstances if the risk of harm is not immediate, right? That's blank what it says now in that policy, yes. Why did you guys, and by you guys I mean County of Los Angeles, why did you revise your policy number 07 or 00705701010, obtaining a search warrant and or custody warrant? Why did you revise that policy? I think I briefly stated that it was based on advice of County Council. Well, it was more than that, wasn't it? I'm not sure what you mean by more than that. Let me see if I can refresh your recollection. This procedural guide is being revised to improve compliance with federal and state law. Does that refresh your recollection about why the policy was revised? Yes, based on County Council's advice. Let, let me do this, and I'll address the foundation question. I'm going to read you a statement. First, I'm going to ask you if you recognize it after I read it to you. This procedural guide is being revised to improve compliance with federal and state law while, by, while promoting best social work practices through the use of warrants. First, I'll ask, do you recognize that statement? It sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, in looking <coughs> at exhibit number 14, is it fair to say that you learned of these warrant requirements prior to September of 2009? Yes. Okay. What I'm wondering is, th these are called procedural guides, right? Yes. And one of the reasons they're called procedural guides is because within, and I've noticed this within many of them, you actually lay out a step-by-step procedure that the social worker is to follow to do whatever it is the procedural guide relates to. Has that been your understanding as well? That's, that is the intent. That's the intent. Yes. I, I assumed it was. I've looked at a lot of these things and that's what it looks like to me is that it's your intent to sort of lay out for the social workers a step-by-step -step procedure to follow when doing certain things, right? Gives them the framework to work within. Right. Well, more than a framework, it's in some cases very specific, right? That's correct. Okay. For example, on your procedural guide relative to obtaining a search warrant, you actually do lay out step by step what the social worker is supposed to do to actually get that piece of paper, that warrant, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have a policy like that somewhere? that dealt with the time period, November 2009 mm -hmm. and prior, where you did the same sort of thing, set out step by step what the social worker is supposed to do to get that piece of paper, that protective custody warrant. The only, no, the only one connected to that would be obtaining a search warrant, which lays out sort of step, it lays out step by step what you do to get a search warrant. And you would agree with me that the procedures that you follow to get a warrant of any kind, whether it's a custody warrant or a search warrant, the procedures include filling out an application. They include filling out an affidavit, right? Yes. Okay, so those are procedures. We're clear, right? Yes. Okay, so that's within the scope of your designation, correct? Yes. Okay. So going back to my original question, now that we've addressed the objection, as of November 2009, were there any forms available by which a social worker could obtain a custody warrant. There were not. There were not. Well, what, well, see, that's what I'm not understanding here. You've got to help me out. Is you tell me today that, you know, they knew that, that if there's not an exigency, they have to get a warrant. They, they knew that according to this, um, Exhibit number 13, right? Yes. And that was November 2009, right? Yes. So they knew they had to get a warrant to seize a child if they didn't have some emergency. Yes? Yes. But you didn't have any of the procedures in place to help them do that, did you? We did not. 
and they didn't have the forms available that they needed to fill out and give to the court to get those custody warrants. I'm going to make November 2009. I'm did they? There were no form. There were no forms. Okay. Why not? I really don't have an answer to that, that we weren't given those forms, they weren't developed. Well, you're the procedure guy. Why didn't you develop a, if, if you knew, based on exhibit number 13, that there were some circumstances under which a warrant would be required, you admit that, right? That there would be some circumstances in 2009 where a warrant would be required to seize a child, right? Yes. So we know there, there's a universe of circumstances out there where, in fact, we may need a warrant, right? Yes. Why would you not have a procedure guide for your social workers to lay out for them step by step how to get that warrant that they're, they're, they may need? I don't have, again, I wasn't asked to develop those forms or develop that spe those steps. Those steps came, as we know, early, later. Let me ask this. Were you limited in any way as to what policies you could look at to prepare yourself for your deposition here today? Same objection, attorney-client privilege. Don't respond. Well, you're here testifying as the person most knowledgeable about the warrant policies and procedures, right? Yes. If you were limited in any way regarding what you could or couldn't look at to prepare yourself, how is it that you are here testifying as the person most knowledgeable? Objection, argumentative, and it also uh, seeks in a backhanded way attorney-client privilege. Don't respond. And of course you're going to follow your attorney's instruction as to all three of those questions. Yes.